Gaming has taken over the planet in more ways than one. Many people nowadays socialize through gaming and put across their own messages. Whether this is through streaming or talking online, however, some bad things can come out of this. And that's what we are talking about today. So stay tuned for today's video as we discuss how the United States government has started to investigate gaming. First up, the U.S. government has awarded grants to investigate extremism in gaming. It looks like the gaming space is starting to get taken more seriously, but not in the way many people expect. The Department of Homeland Security has seemingly given researchers a grant so they can specialize in terrorism, over a million dollar study into gaming. The Department of Homeland Security in the United States was founded shortly after the 9-11 terrorist attacks back in 2001. They created this department to counter terrorism, and in modern times, they work close with military action throughout the world. Originally, this department was made to monitor terrorism and make sure that there were no other acts like 9-11 ever happen again. However, nowadays, it is used a little more loosely as it is able to investigate multiple different types of terrorism throughout the world. This grant has been awarded as a joint venture between the Middlebury Institute and a company that studies toxic behavior online on a macro level named Logically. These two have also been paired with Take This, which is a non-profit organization that specializes in combating mental health issues throughout the gaming space. The Middlebury Institute specifically focuses on counterterrorism, terrorism, extremism, or CTEC. It's crazy that this is happening in the first place, as many wouldn't assume that gaming was a hub for terrorism. However, previous investigations have discovered that gaming is actually an easy way for people to communicate under the veil of the government. This brand new joint venture is aiming to develop and publish a set of best practices and centralized resources for monitoring and evaluation of extremist activities, as well as a series of training workshops for the monitoring, detection, and prevention of extremist exploitation in gaming spaces for community managers, multiplayer designers, lore developers, mechanic designers, and trust and safety professionals. Over the past decade, video games have increasingly become focal points of social activity and identity creation for adolescents and young adults. Relationships made and fostered within game ecosystems routinely cross over into the real world and are impressive and inspirational parts of local communities, the statement reads. Correspondingly, extremists have used video games and targeted video game communities for activities ranging from propaganda creation to terrorist mobilization and training hidden from the wider audience though this goes under the radar quite often there are many communities throughout the world that are rife with white nationalism and even neo-nazi behavior steam has actually allowed in the past content that espoused racist and neo-nazi ideals but over the last few years they have started to de-platform that sort of content as it is obviously not what they stand for nor what they want to put across to the public. This brand new group is going to explore how online communities center on gaming and how they can tap into extremism through it. It's a relatively new field of study, so it's going to take a while for them to get the hang of things. But it's a very important thing for them to do. In previous years, the U.S. government has focused on countering terrorism within the Middle East. This was all while homegrown terrorism was growing in size and scale throughout the world. This brand new group, who are tackling gaming, are set to tackle this homegrown terrorism and deal with it on a macro level. Though terrorism and neo-Nazi behavior in the gaming space isn't very common, it's definitely there and needs to be dealt with. There are groups in online games that are acting like terrorists or even planning to do certain things. It's an awful thing that these people do, and it's actually more common than you might think. Whilst most gamers will likely never ever come across this 
odd thing in their lives. It's something the government needs to deal with, and we respect them for putting up a good amount of money for this study. Hopefully, stuff like this gets resolved pretty soon, and this group the government put together sticks around for a long time to help protect the gaming space and its people. Please let us know down in the comments section below your thoughts on all of this, as well as what you think the group is going to cover first. And now, on to some other gaming news from over the last few weeks to wrap up today's video. Finally, have Sony lost their minds with more remakes? The idea of remakes is a massive thing within the gaming community, as many people throughout the world want specific games to be remastered for current consoles. Whether this is an old single player game like the original Silent Hill, or even a game that didn't get to shine on the console it was originally launched on. Over the last few years, we have seen remakes and remasters be some of the biggest releases of the year. The Resident Evil 2 remake was phenomenal, and nearly won multiple awards during the game award season of its release year. The Resident Evil 3 remake followed on and took the world by storm. This has now led to Resident Evil 4 being remade, and we can't wait for its release sometime next year. With the advent of more and more remakes comes the idea idea of whether they are necessary at all. First of all, however, we have to make a distinct difference between remakes and remasters. The idea of a remaster is to bring a game to a different console or bring it back to its standards. The vast majority of remasters improve the graphics slightly and make the game work at a higher fidelity. This could allow the game to move from 1080p to 1440p, whilst also upping the resolution of the graphics. It's a pretty simple process and something that happens all the time. An example of this was The Last of Us from PS3 to PS4. The game was slightly upgraded and bundled with all of its content. This is the standard practice for remasters, and it's something we still see to this day. Remakes are simply different, as the studio around them completely remakes the game from the ground up. An example of this recently was obviously the two Resident Evil releases, as well as many games on Nintendo's platforms. Many years back, we had Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask remade for the Nintendo 3DS. These games are a perfect example of a good remake, as they haven't been released in a good amount of time. Decades had passed since they were first released, and they desperately needed that modern touch to bring them back into the spotlight for gamers. Remakes and remasters also allow a brand new audience to touch the game, as they might not even know the game exists, or might not have access to it because of being locked to an older console. Sony and Remakes Though the vast majority of remakes and remasters go down pretty positively with the audience, Sony has recently been taking it to a brand new level. With the success of The Last of Us 2, Sony announced that the original Last of Us would be remade for the PS5. This came as a big shock for the audience as the game was already remastered for the PS4 and then subsequently released on the PS5 as well, though they were skeptical at first. When they showed off the remake of The Last of Us, fans were taken by surprise. They had put The Last of Us 1 into The Last of Us 2 engine and completely remade the graphics. They made all the characters look much better and brought everything into the next generation. Whilst The Last of Us 1 wasn't exactly an old game, it was a nice upgrade and fans were pretty happy with it. However, it seems like Sony has now got an obsession with remaking games they absolutely do not need to. One of the biggest examples that just leaked is a Horizon Zero Dawn remake for the PS5. If you didn't know, Horizon Zero Dawn was recently released on the PS5 in a remaster sort of way. The game's fidelity was increased and its graphics were enhanced, but it was nowhere near on the scale of a remake. Sony appeared to want to bring the first game into its new graphical system with the release of Horizon Zero Dawn 2. However, the games don't differ much in graphics, and all they would need to do with the original Horizon Zero Dawn is what they've already done with its recent PS5 version. The leak about the Horizon Zero 
Zero Dawn 1 remake completely took the community by storm and made people outraged on social media. What exactly is going on with Sony? The original Horizon Zero Dawn is not even 5 years old and it's getting a remake? The problem with this is that they are definitely going to charge more for the game, meaning that it will most likely be released for £70 in the UK. Many people prefer the game to launch at a significantly lower price, around something like 40 instead. It's crazy that Sony is pumping out these remakes consistently whilst also bringing out brand new games. It does show the tenacity of the gaming industry, but it also shows how money hungry they are. There is absolutely no need to remake Horizon Zero Dawn, as it is already a popular game and everyone has access to it through its discounted release on the PlayStation Store. If this remake does turn out to be true, we already know that fans are going to be even more outraged during the live stream where it gets announced. And that's the end of today's video. Hopefully, you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down in the comments section below? It would be very helpful. Make sure to like this video, comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!